It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about restaurant secrets of Old Country Buffet. Old Country Buffet was a uh, buffet chain of restaurants. Started in 1983, and as far as I could tell, the last one closed in 2020, but the majority of them closed in 2012. And the reason they closed is uh, lack of care, neglect, poor operation choices. Now, all this is, uh, I'm reading, obviously, all this is based on a, uh, some research I did from restaurantclicks.com. Uh, they basically wouldn't keep up with the times. They had, you know, old comfort food, meatloaf, good stuff like that, and they never really changed the menu to adapt to the new taste of the younger people as they got into the market. Um, I'm assuming like vegan and vegetarian stuff like that, maybe. I don't really know. Now, I had the opportunity to work there for a while. Um, there was one here in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. It opened up in 96. I started training in late 95 for that, 1995. Back in the 1900s. And uh, so I started as a line cook there, and they made me a corporate trainer. I worked there for three years, and I was training people in a couple other different old country buffets. We always liked old country buffet. Um, but I have some secrets to tell you about it. So picture now, the beginning of 1996, and we're hiring all these new people for the restaurant. And this is the first thing they got to see. You might recognize him. This is the guy that was in the training videos back in 1996, whenever I started. And it's all over the internet now. It's all over YouTube. They make fun of these videos. I think the actual guy that made these videos is the one that started uploading them to YouTube. I don't know if it's the guy that actually made the video or the guy in the video that uploaded it. Not really sure. I read, was reading it. It was kind of confusing. But anyway, if you've ever seen this guy, that you know, it's, it looks like a joke training view video if you watch it now. But it was actually the real deal, and that's what we had to watch whenever we started at Old Country Buffet. And I had to sit through this with classes with other kids and everything, or other, well, yeah, they were pretty much kids back then. <coughs> so was I. I mean, this is 1995. I was, oh, geez, I was, uh, I was in my 20s. But, yeah, so... This is a real guy. These were real videos. If you get a chance, go on YouTube and search for Old Country... Bit, old Country... Still can't talk. Old Country Buffet Training Videos. And these, this guy comes up cutting the steak. It was really, really funny. The videos are. And they were really stupid back then, too. But we still had to watch them. Now, Old Country Buffet was owned by a, a corporation called Buffets Incorporated. Buffets Inc. That's what the sign says. And they also owned Hometown Buffet. So, both these restaurants went under either name. But there's also been some speculation, did they order, did, do they do they own New City Buffet, which is what took Old Country Buffet's place here in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Um, I haven't been gotten definitive proof on that. From what I understand, Buffet's Incorporated was sold out to a different company, which I think does own New City Buffet. Don't think anybody really cares, though. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But anyway, uh, so yeah, from 96 to, uh, let's see, the one in... Greensburg did close in 2012, I believe. They opened up in 96. So they had a good run for a little while. I worked there for about three years, like I said. And then I, of course, moved away and went into work under real restaurants and hotels and stuff like that. Uh, the thing that made it work back then, because when it first opened in 96, it was hugely popular. Because you could take your whole family there. It's all-you-can-eat buffet. All kind of food on there. I mean, if you left there hungry, it was your own problem. Because they had something for everybody. They even had pizza and chicken nuggets for the kids. And uh, they ate all kinds of good stuff. Which I'm going to get into what I think is the best things here in a minute. But what I want to talk about now is the kids. Uh, the kids would come in. And our generation, Gen X, is what raised the kids that I'm talking about now. They bring the little kids in there, and they taught the kids how to act around a buffet. Don't pick up stuff with your bare hands. Don't sit there with your nose in the food. You know, we taught our kids right. And we never really had a problem with that back then when I worked there. Uh, but as the years went by, kids got worse and worse and worse. And it made, made it to the point. I went to Golden Corral here in Pittsburgh uh, about a month ago. And it's just kids sticking their hands all over the food. It's not like it used to be. Parents, teach your kids the proper way to act at a buffet. Then it won't be any problem. They don't need to touch stuff. Actually, get, to, get their plate for them. Walk with them. Don't let your kids run amok because then the food just gets gross. Now, I had mentioned earlier why they say uh, Old Country Buffet actually went under in uh, 2012 to 2020, whatever that range is. And, of course, I referenced uh, Restaurant Clicks, what they had to say. For the years I was there, I knew some of the, the some of the finances of some of the money coming in and out, food costs, that kind of stuff. That was my job. 
I think the downfall of it was people got greedy. Um, people would come into the buffets with a large purse and they'd sit there and think they're getting away with something. They'd stick all kind of food in their purses. I've seen that happen plenty of times. And then, you know, the, the time goes on, the purses got bigger and bigger and bigger. So they, you know, they're paying $11 for a dinner. They're taking home $20, $25 worth of food in their purse. And our policy back then was you can't really say anything, which if you ever met me and you could tell by my personality, I absolutely said stuff to people and I didn't care. I got written up for it once, too, and I just laughed. I'm like, it's old country buffet. What do I care? No, don't be a pig. And if you see somebody else next to you putting food in their bag like that, tell them off. Embarrass them a little bit because that's why these places get shut down because the food cost outweighs the money they're making in. Just common sense. Okay, I did promise you some secrets from old country buffet when I was there. The first secret is their saying used to be all fresh all the time. That lasted about six months. And then they changed it to... Um, what was it? Shoot, I knew this this morning. Um, oh, fresh food all the time. They changed it, the word. Instead of all fresh, they changed it to fresh food. And the reason they did that is because it wasn't always fresh. I mean, obviously it was a frozen pizza If you you know, for the kids. The frozen chicken strips, frozen french fries, little things like that. And, and that's fine. You know, because you expect uh, chicken chicken strips to be frozen. But what you didn't know is some of those soups that they claim they made are homemade on site, especially the cream soups, your potato soup, your broccoli soup, any cream soup came in frozen in a big chunk like this. And we would heat it up and serve it. That's all we did. The only homemade soup they had there that was really made fresh on site that I can remember, and there might be a, one or two more, I'm just saying what I remember, is the chicken noodle soup. I remember making that every single day because they always had the chicken noodle soup on the line. That was made fresh right there every day. Not that it matters. I mean, like I said, the potato soup and the broccoli soup were really good anyway, so who cares if they were frozen? But they're trying to pass it off, make you think that they just make that every day. They don't. They heat it up from a frozen clunk of stuff that came in from the distributor. Uh, what other secrets? Here's a secret. Ooh, big secret. It's actually a really good secret, though, so you're going to like this. I think they had the best fried chicken of the area for the time. Uh, not counting KFC. Uh, but here's the, the secret of their fried chicken. Uh, they had a breader come in. This was one guy, his job five days a week to come in, work eight hours. All he did was bread the chicken. And I'll say his name. He might even see this video. I don't know if he's still in this local area or not. But his name was Sean Lichtenfels. And believe me, that's a name you're going to remember. Or I remembered it. Anyway, that was his job. He'd come in in the morning, set up a station. All day long, he would bread chicken. Trays and trays of chicken, fresh bread, and we'd throw it in the fryer and cook it. It was really good chicken. But the thing about this kid, and he was a kid back then, he was so meticulous. The first piece he breaded in the morning was just as good as the last piece at night. He was, um, don't know the right way to say it. Hopefully you know where I'm getting getting at with this because I personally could not stand there for eight hours a day and do nothing but bread chicken and have it come out perfect all the time. There would become a time where I didn't give a shit. Uh, this kid didn't. He From the time he started to the time he was done, chicken was breaded perfect every time. He'd go home covered in flour and the chicken batter all over him every single day. But he got that chicken done. And I, I admire the guy for being able to do that eight hours a day, five days a week. That's all he did. But that's the secret of the fried chicken. It is fresh breaded and it is fresh fried. So it's not frozen. Uh, and some of the other secrets I'm going to wait because the whole reason this video is I want to see if you guys are interested. If you're interested, I'm going to do a few recipe videos coming up um, to see, to show you guys how to make some of the food that used to be at Old Country Buffet because I still have them all up here. And uh, if you're interested, this is where I'm going to ask you to leave me a like or make a comment. Comment what you would like to learn how to make from Old Country Buffet or a similar place. And uh, that way I know you're interested. Uh, give me a like, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm going to read uh, my favorite foods from Old Country Buffet, and I can show you how to make each one of these. Uh, but, yeah, if you leave a comment and, and like or something, then I know you're paying attention, and I know you do want to see some new stuff coming up as far as recipes and how to cook this stuff. One, of course, is the fried chicken. My favorite thing at Old Country Buffet was always the meatloaf. And it's honestly, it's just a very basic meatloaf. Nothing fancy about it. I can show you how to make it. You can make it at your own house and, you know, live the good old days from uh, uh, Old Country Buffet. In fact, I just made this for my wife last week and she loves it. Of course, it's my own little twist. But if I do do enough video, I will do it the way Old Country Buffet did. 
uh, macaroni and cheese. I know anybody can make macaroni and cheese, but I can show you how they made it at Old Country Buffet, which is, you know, everybody makes it different if it's something you like. There was a dish on the buffet called Spinach Marie. Sounds really fancy. It's, uh, it's very simple to make. A couple eggs, a little bit of spinach, and other things that I can show you. It was like a, I always called it a quiche, but it didn't have a shell, so. It was a spinach dish, if you like spinach. Spinach and eggs are real fluffy, and it's called Spinach Marie. If you remember that, let me know if you want to learn how to make it, because I'll show you. Uh, the baked fish. This is another secret, though. I don't have to show you how to make this. The baked, baked fish actually came in frozen in those little triangle pieces. And all we did when we cooked it is we threw it on a pan, hit it with some liquid butter. It was called whirl, if you know what that is. It's not even a butter. It's a butter-flavored shortening. And a uh, little bit of seasoned salt on it. That was it. Baked it. Served it. Done. I already mentioned about the soups. Um, I can show you how to make the, all those soups from scratch. Soups is actually what I do. In fact, I did a video of a couple soups earlier on if you want to look in my channel and see what I got. See, when I don't drink, I talk real fast because I had like two Red Bulls before I made this. So, anyway, last thing I want to talk about. I already touched, touched on about this. Well, no, no, there's something else too. I love at Old Cruncher Buffet, at the end of the buffet, they always had the roast and the ham and it was some guy sitting there, or girl, sitting there slicing it, cutting it, serving it to each person. I always thought that was like fancy back in the late 90s. Um, I don't know if anybody does that anymore or not. Um, there wasn't anybody there at Golden Corral when I was there that day. Um, yeah, I don't know. But then sometimes they'd have turkey or ham, same thing. Have somebody sitting there slicing off pieces for you, make you feel important. But it goes back to the guy from the video. If you get a chance, look him up because they're the guy. First of all, I'm sorry, the guy looks stoned out of his mind the whole video, but you know, it is what it is. Um, other secrets, you know what? I'm going to hold on to them. And when I make the recipes for you guys, if you want any of them, I'll let you know a little more next time. I don't have any disgusting secrets to tell you about Old Country Buffet. You might have been, you might have saw my other videos where I did restaurant horror stories and had some horror stories of a place I worked at at Cedar Point. Uh, and this place, it was okay. I mean, when I worked there, we all got along pretty good. Uh, there was one guy, his name was Zach. Uh, me and him didn't get along at all. This will just be a quick story, I promise. But it's, it's, it's interesting, and maybe you get a life lesson out of it. His name was Zach. We didn't really get along too well. Both about the same age. And uh, uh, we were both very headstrong. We both enjoyed cooking for people, and we both wanted everything to be perfect. So we'd get mad at each other. We'd, we'd even get a little jealous of each other. One day he goes over to me, he's like, I, I don't even know what we were arguing about, but I, I don't back down. And I basically told him to kiss my ass. And uh, he's like, well, let's go outside. I'm like, fine, we'll go outside. So me and Zach, we go outside, and we're yelling and screaming. We pushed each other, and a couple couple blows were thrown. And uh, and then we just, like, stopped. And it's like, all right, are you done? I'm like, I'm done. Are you done? And we were, like, really good friends after that because we both realized that, hey, this dude cares as much about food as I do. And that's what it all came down to. So, yeah, you never know how you're going to make friends. I was friends with him for uh, quite a few years until I moved away again, and we kind of lost touch. But um, it just it just goes to show sometimes you might think somebody hates you or you might hate somebody. Then you talk, sit down, talk it out, or in this case, fight it out. And, uh, you know, you got a decent friend out of it. So uh, I was going to go on a rant about Golden Corral, but I think I already mentioned it earlier in the video about the problem I have with Golden Corral is filthy. People are not parenting their kids enough and teaching them how to act around a buffet. So I won't go back. Uh, people just leaving their kids running around rampant. You know, reaching up, touching the food, tasting the food, grabbing stuff with their hands. I, I seen it. And the parents just sit there and, oh, isn't he cute? Little Johnny son of a bitch got his hand full of spaghetti. No, dudes. If you got kids, teach them the right way to act in a buffet. It's important. Because they're going to teach their kids too. And this has to keep going. I know I taught my kids. Never had a problem with my kids at the buffet. And in the 90s, those kids were much better than they are today. So apparently those kids grew up, had kids of their own, and didn't bother teaching them. So yeah, I'm yelling at you guys. Take care of your kids. Teach them well. <laughs> like I said, leave me a like and a comment down there. Tell me what you want to know about Old Country Buffet specifically. I will show you how to make some of this food I mentioned. Um, there's other things I know that I think there's a lot to talk about about the kind of food that was at uh, Old Country Buffet. Uh, it wasn't my favorite place to work work. But I'll tell you what, it's kind of one of my places, to, my favorite places to eat back then. Because I would take my kids up there and, you know, we could eat cheap and it was good food. And I knew how I was made, so. All right, guys, hey, thanks for tuning in. Like I said, uh, look for a recipe video coming up here pretty soon or whatever you guys pick. 
And uh, I will catch you later. Bye. It's just Bruce. He don't bite. <laughs> Hello.